What is up, YouTube world? I'm Ashley D. Before I get started, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Also, feel free to share this free video as well. Everything I state is allegedly not a guaranteed fact, my own personal opinion and observation. So, before I get started, I would like to shout out Jeannie Irvin, Eleanor Burks, as well as Aries Black. I just want to say thank you, ladies. You guys surprised me with the cash app as well as Aries. You was being uplifting yesterday with your message. And Eleanor, you always have something positive behind your message as well. And Jeannie, you're just a sweetheart. And I want to thank you guys for always rooting for what's right. It's not about team this, team that. It's about what's right. And you guys always stand 10 toes down on that. So it's not just us content creators, it's you guys as well. That's behind the scenes. So with that being said, I just want to let you all know that I genuinely appreciate you and I'm grateful for the surprise cash apps. Now, before I get started today as well, I would like to apologize to everyone out there that feels as though the behavior yesterday on the panel it was kind of out of line. I did not expect it. I just want to say when I have someone that I'm cool with, it's genuine. And I go out of my way above and beyond not to be a flunky, not to be ran over, but to be loyal if I receive that loyalty in return. What happened with Sweet Ma yesterday, from her coming back to the scene painting, being in a positive, uplifting mood, seeing a smile on her face that we haven't seen in a while. And for her to get hit with that negativity back to back, back to back. As a content creator, I know, that was my water, sorry. I know that when this happens, you might need to take some time to collect your thoughts, think about what's gonna happen, what you're gonna do next. See how you're going to go about it. So me being a friend, I was coaching her to let her know we are not only on the live, but me as well wants her to know that if she does end this right now, if she does want to go to her other page, if she wants to go on mine, whatever she decides to do, we're okay with that. I didn't want her to sit up there and she's not comfortable or she's not all the way there her vibrant, vibrant, beautiful, loving self. So that's me encouraging my friend to do what she felt was best and to reassure her that whatever decision she decided to make, I was okay with that. Now, everything kind of escalated behind the scene as well. I don't know who this lady is and I don't know what her problem is, but she seems to have some type of issue with me and I addressed it yesterday. I'm not gonna give her any more of my energy. I made a joke about it on my community. I'm the type of person I make living out of lemonade as well as making a couple jokes in regards to, to Sierra, who's always clout chasing, who's online once again for no apparently good reason on these people panel who talked about her telling her business, allegedly having five other different child's fathers, but she has all the smoke for Mr. LaTrue. Wait, better yet, even someone on her page on Facebook said you was just on here the other day going off on your other child's father. And what did she say? Show was, they said you said the same thing. Show did. It's terrible how women will rally around one another just to bring another man down. And sometimes things are justified when a man has to stand up for himself if he can't put his fist on someone. I never condone, condone or would suggest for a man to strike back in a physical way. But if he's constantly being dragged through the mud, antagonized, and being insulted, manhood questioned, when he's being vulnerable and opening up at the most vulnerable stage and someone says, I'm there for you, or 
everyone online laughs about that, calls you sensitive because you bring up certain things. And you're not being sensitive, you're just being real. You're speaking on things that bother you. That's why you're more relatable to your audience instead of your partner. That's why everyone can connect with you because it's a lot of people out there that hears your message and knows it's genuine. And I'm talking about Mr. LaTruth, Toya, as well as Kevin. People hear their message and people look forward to them and their positive, uplifting videos. The real, the raw, and the uncut versus putting a nice sticker over it, packaging it up good, and sending it to shipper. They don't do that. They're honest about everything. And I like that about this family. What is there not to like? Now, another thing for another YouTuber. And I, no, it wasn't a YouTuber. It was someone just being on a panel. And I'll consider this person a sub. I told you guys I don't like calling my people subs. But I'm going to call this one a subs. Sub or instigator had the nerve to go under Nate's post and say, excuse me, this man's mom would not approve of his behavior. She would be rolling over. First of all, how dare you speak on what someone else's mother would approve of? Don't speak on people's mom. Just because Lyonya has no problem saying, oh, my mom, oh, my mom. That doesn't mean these people are okay with you speaking on their mom. Second of all, you're right. His mother wouldn't approve of these hateful, bashing women instead of being uplifting to their sons or her daughter, encouraging them to fight the fight. Because unlike like Anya, what did Mr. Latruth say? He allegedly lost his, daughter, his mother at the age of six. So imagine how lost and broken those kids must have felt to lose their mom at such a tragic age and have to process the fact that she's never coming back. No matter how many times they asked family members, days went by, weeks, months, they still was not old enough to understand that. And even when they thought they would understand it, they probably went back to square one and once again started asking about it because they couldn't process it. The more older they became, the more realer it became. And they finally had to come to the realization that their mom was no longer here. And she was not coming back. So when I see a positive family that are speaking on surviving something at such a young age that's so devastating. Encouraging others to be great, not to mention. To stand in your truth as well as your religion. People can say they don't believe in what Mr. Kevin believes. However, that's okay. His message is still positive. He still does not criticize you for what you believe. And he still, most importantly, encourage you to do the right thing. Encourage you to better yourselves. So when these people come at this family and try to take their platform down, try to silence them, try to continue to hit them where it hurts, it bothers me and my spirit. Mr. LaTruth lost his mom at such a young age. She didn't get a chance to see his kids. She didn't get a chance to see him graduate from high school. She won't have a chance to see his grandkids. She didn't get a chance to see what him and the siblings have turned their lives into something great and made it into something positive. She didn't get a chance to see them survive cancer. She didn't get a chance to see him survive a second cancer that he's still going through and continuing to push forward without losing himself. Now, the funniest thing is, Miss Lyonia also stated that she felt like she was a child. She became a child. He turned her into a child. Okay. I can see where she says that and where she's coming from. You would feel like a child if you were a half mom and a half wife. If your husband made you take accountability for doing the basic necessities around the house, for combing your kids' hair, getting them dressed, getting them to school on time, 
making sure homework is done, making sure you cook, all the things that a wife does and taking on that role when you sign up for better or worse. I mean, he did clearly a lot of those tasks and duties as well. He helped you from doing the haircuts to teaching them things, teaching them how to cook the same things that you never done on camera. Up until now, when we speak on, he's done that with them. So even your reenactment of the pranks. And the same thing that this man has shared with you about not having a mom. It's the same raw and soft spot that not only you, but now your handlers have a nerve to try to hit him at. Hit him where it hurts. Since you guys can't hurt him by words. You can't hit him physically, mentally, verbally. You have to keep digging in a raw spot. Not only for him, but his siblings. They might not say anything about it, but I guarantee you, it bothers him. For someone to speak bad of your mother, it hurts. Clearly, Miss Light, on you don't care. And then everyone wants to use an excuse of, she's so young, she needs time, she hasn't fully developed yet. This is a grown woman we, we're talking about. She is going to be more of a woman now than she would ever be. Let's clear that up. She grew up with her mom, whether she was in the household with her or she switched back and forth from her mother to her father. Clearly, she grew up with a mother. Her mother had a chance to see her three kids. She had a chance to have those special moments with her mother that Mr. Latruth and his siblings was unfortunately cheated out of. Excuse me, I, I'm a little passionate, so I'm getting a little tongue-tied. But they didn't have that opportunity. So for not only this woman to constantly say, oh, my mom, disrespect her mom repeated, repeatedly like that. But to dig at him and say, I don't want to be your mom. I don't want to be this and that. You need to heal those childhood wounds. And then you command other people for doing so in the bashing. And you say you didn't think. He was fully healed, <clears throat> excuse me, and also you didn't want to be a mom again, but yet you adopt the whole man child. You adopt a whole man child and was willing to take care of this man to be a mother to him. You read a card to him on live, something that was supposed to be sweet, a romantic moment, a romantic gesture. And just like always, what did he do? Shoe fly, don't bother me. That's what he did to you. He shooed you off of him. He did not show any care or concern about that car. He basically was acting as though, move, girl, come on, let's cook these shrimp like we've been doing. Let's continue to overcook these shrimp. Let me let you get this scene and let's beat it. And you can cut these cameras off soon because I'm ready to um stop acting now. I'm tired of pretending right now. I'm over it. Let's hurry up and cook. We're not this happy couple that we appear to be on camera. We know that. The gig's been up. So I was compelled to make this video based off of that. As well as, it's another thing that I wanted to touch on. That was, I felt like, a soft spot for this man. As well as his family. But I think I pretty much covered everything. I spoke on the women coming to the panel bashing, bringing up his mother no longer no longer being here. Her complaining about how she felt like a child having to do the normal duties that a wife does. And I'm not saying a wife has to cook, but you're a mother. You should comb your kids' hair. That shouldn't make you feel like you're a prisoner or feel like you were just so victimized because your husband made you be a woman. And in the video, several times, when you all were first dating, when you all first got married, what did you not say, Lyonia? You said he helped you become the woman you are today. If it wasn't for your husband, you would be doing the same thing. And that was a nine to five. You constantly told us how he upgraded you. We saw it for ourselves, even on the audio that he released saying for four years, you did not have to pay any bills. He allowed you to save and stack your money. He even took care of your car insurance. So you mean to tell me out of all those nice, sweet gestures 
things that your husband done that a lot of people that's been married for years or in a relationship for a very long time, longer than these few years of you guys' relationship. Because if you've done that for four and you was together for six, the math not math and sweetie. So basically, a majority, 90% of that relationship, he was carrying you, the kids, and all the duties. And the only thing you probably had to do was reciprocate that love from time to time. Step up and be a woman. Step up and cook dinner for your hubby. Step up and make sure the house is clean. Make sure the tasks around are getting done. That's it. But that was too much for you as well. You would rather pay for a man child instead of stand on the side of a real man and grow into an amazing power couple. You didn't want that. You made your bed, like I always say, and you're gonna be lying in it alone. You think these people love, care about you, and they support you, and they, they're down for you 110%? You better guess again. Because when that raid come out and those roaches go to flying everywhere, trying to cover for shelter, best believe you're going to be the biggest roach in the center of the floor. You're going to be held accountable for all the wrong that you have done, for all your lies. They're going to be exposed. When these people get caught up in the chaos and the drama that you started, that you coached them to do, they're going to rat you out. No, no one is going to get a felony for you like on him. No one's going to mess up their life just because you were willing to mess up your marriage, mess up someone else's career. They're not going down for you like that. They're down with you right now because what you do for them, allegedly, what you do behind closed doors. I'm Ashley D. Excuse me, my mouth was dry early in the morning. I will be speaking to each and every one of you soon. Soon, please leave your opinion down below and I'm catching a cold. Take care. Bye.